Hi, my name is Leila Mahmoudi Mader, and I'm honored to tell you my immigration story and the importance of this church. I wish I had more time because there is a lot to say. I was born in Tehran, the capital city of a Muslim country which named Iran. As a child born in Muslim family, I had to carry on my parents' religion. So I was Muslim as my parents were and their parents were. When I was a student, we had some Islamic religious courses which were my favorite. I was looking for the answer to all my questions, and every year that I was getting older, I was more curious, or, but more unsatisfied. I knew I wanted to know more, but there was always a fear of digging deeper. When I got older, there was a church close to my school, which was a beautiful and mysterious building. Every day that I was passing by it, I wished I could go inside that building, but I knew it was not possible. They could not allow any Muslim person inside, and I was so mad at them. Now I understand why, because they would get in trouble with the government. There is a small population of Christian people who are living in Iran, and they can practice their religion, though the government makes problems for them. One of the rules for them to practice is not talking about their religion with Muslim people. One day, I successfully snack in and attended to the worship. That was a turning point in my life. I can't explain how were all my different emotions and how hard it was for me to manage them. After that day, I searched and read more and more as I understood more about Christianity. I was getting more interested. After that day, I was able to sneak in a few more times, and I knew I was making trouble for myself and that church. Later, I found out about an underground church, which was a place for people like me, who weren't born Christian, but wanted to know and practice Christianity. Attending those gatherings was a big risk and life-threatening. As someone who was born in in a Muslim family, you have no freedom to choose your religion because you are already Muslim. It is a capital crime. That's the rule. With all the activities and involvement that I had with my underground church, I was more and more fearful of being caught every day. My parents, who were Muslim but were not really practicing, were so worried about me. They couldn't stop me, so we decided for me to leave the country and move where I could have the freedom to follow my heart and the religion that I believe in. It wasn't easy for me because I left behind my family, friends, and many things that I loved. I knew I wouldn't be able to see them for a long time. I still haven't seen them for seven years. When I came to United States, I had to deal with many, many problems, but it was worth it to be able to leave my dream and practice my religion. I didn't know about the Lutheran church until luckily I make, made a friend of my friend her, here. She invited me to New Hope Lutheran Church. The first day I met this community, I realized that I was in the right place. The most important reason that I joined this community was the wonderful people and their lovely welcoming. I met Pastor Craig. It was a pleasure and proved to be life-changing. I decided to learn more about Lutheranism and stay with my new faith family. Although I don't have my family here, this beautiful community become my family, and I'm so lucky to have them. New Hope Lutheran Church, especially Pastor Craig, encouraged me to learn more and more about Lutheranism, and I'm so grateful for that. Yesterday, when I was preparing my words, every event of my life was playing in my mind like a movie. I couldn't help crying as I thought of all the people back in my country in any place in the world where people don't have freedom in basic human rights. I would like to ask you to pray for all those people, especially people back in Iran and recently in Afghanistan.
especially for all the women in those countries. Thank you for being my church family and congratulations to Bishop Boss. 6% Native American. That's what my DNA test showed. I'd grown up with family lore that my dad was descended from the prestigious Carrillo and Ortega founding families of California. The Californios. Not Mexicans or even worse, Indians. Yet I'd also overheard whispered sneers at my father's mother as an Indian, as if it were the worst insult that could be hurled. There was hostility that I didn't understand, but I knew there was something in my heritage that was considered so shameful it needed to be kept secret. Family members told me my dad was called a beaner and a spick when he was a kid, his white heritage buried under his brown skin and black hair. It was an amusing story to them, the whiter-looking family. But I saw the sadness in my father's eyes, and I heard the silence with which he met my questions about our California's heritage. I understood and shared that silence when my classmates decided my strange name, Marina, could be rhymed with tortilla to make a hilarious schoolyard taunt. <laughs> Many years later, I found distant relatives on genealogy websites that seemed to show that my dad had a Tongva Gabrielina great-grandmother named Graciela. I don't know if dad knew that. I don't know what he knew. But when I read it, I knew it was true. It felt true. But I was raised white. I am white. So maybe it wasn't true. Maybe I was just caught up in the weird, pervasive white delusion of native ancestry. And then DNA tests became available. The gain and the loss became real. The veil of silence, shame, and secrecy was torn, yet there's no restoration. Generations of silence broken is still silence. In my paintings, I'm looking toward a distant land, carrying within me a woman whose stories and whose people's stories under California skies, along California shores, I will never know. And that is what 6% Native American means to me. Hola, tengan buen día. Mi nombre es Brian Hernández y quiero contarles el motivo por el cual mi familia y yo decidimos dejar nuestro país, El Salvador. Eh, nuestra historia es sobre la delincuencia. Eh, la delincuencia que se ve en el país es horrible. Eh, nosotros fuimos víctimas de unas pandillas. Eh, con mi esposa teníamos un negocio, ven, unas ventas de zapatos y pues... Ella y yo siempre buscábamos nuevos clientes. Un, en una ocasión fuimos a un lugar que nunca, no, no, no solíamos recurrir. Y eh, en el trayecto se nos presentaron estas pandillas y nos, a, no se podría decir, nos secuestraron por un momento. Nos quitaron nuestras pertenencias, eh, documentos. Nos eh, dijeron de que les diéramos todo. Al final... Bueno, entre otras cosas que pasaron, que no puedo ser tan específico, pero al final nos dijeron que iban a estarnos quitando cierto dinero mensualmente y que ya sabían dónde vivíamos, que lo teníamos que hacer. Teníamos que darle cierta cantidad. Eh, al principio nosotros, pues, para lograr salir de ahí, dijimos que, que ok, íbamos a hacerlo, pero... Con el poco dinero que íbamos sacando no podíamos darles esa cantidad y como no les dimos esa cantidad nos amenazaron de muerte, nos dijeron que nos iban a matar, este, nos sacaron una pistola, llegaron una ocasión a la casa a buscar este, cómo, cómo darles el dinero 
y la verdad de que antes de que pasara el plazo que nos dieron para que le diéramos el dinero decidimos dejar nuestro país y así pues arriesgar nuestras vidas en este trayecto hasta aquí y aún estamos a la espera de que nos arreglen nuestro caso estamos pidiendo asilo por eso porque tenemos miedo si volvemos a nuestro país yo sé que nos van a buscar nos van a buscar porque tienen todas nuestras direcciones eh, las fotos, nos tomaron fotos y bueno, estamos a la espera de a ver cómo nos, nos va en nuestra situación de, de inmigrantes. Y bueno, ante todo, tengan buen día y muchas gracias por escucharme. Gracias.上帝的灵气在太初如风运行中水之上。哦，上帝的灵气，天地万物的奇妙的诞生，来充满我们心灵，赐下你丰富恩典。哦，亲爱的神灵。祈求你来进入我们心中。So pode Dios viviente porque ne hijo se hizo hombre. So pode Dios viviente querer no más de la creación. De no ya nos casamos. Infunde los tus dones, sopro de Dios viviente, oh Santo Espíritu de Señor. Oh living breath of God, bearing us to life through baptismal waters. Oh living breath of God, sighing with creation through freedom's birth. Come now and feel the spirit. Put all your gifts abundant. Oh, living breath of God, 